Hey everybody. A lot of you may recognize this sketch that I've done of my son and granddaughter. I've been working on it for past the past several days. Um, I've tweaked it and tweaked it and I still see some things that aren't quite right, but you know, sometimes you just have to let things go. And now what I want to do is now that I'm familiar with the picture, kind of familiar with where things are and maybe how to shade things with value, I actually want to work on this in color. So I'm not going to add color to this. This is just my black and white sketch. It's on my cheaper sketchbook paper. I actually want to, I want to draw it now on this better paper. This is a slightly better stock than what my sketchbook is. It will take color better. It will take erasing better. Um, it is, let me just show you what it is. It's not the best still, but it is a Strathmore drawing pad. Um, it's it's a drawing paper, it's really made, it's not even made for multimedia per se, but it will work very well with pencil, which is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do color pencil. So I'm going to take, this is my original photo, and instead of just sketching it freehand, um, I've learned that freehand sketching especially for me, I'm just not that great at it. Um, I can make it look okay, but I want it to look like these two people that I love really well. So um, I've looked at a couple of different YouTubers um, and they have some great ideas about how to do accurate sketches. So I've kind of done my own thing and my own conglomerate of what I've learned from them. They've They've talked about actually, you know, measuring on the paper from the side and the top and plotting out all the points and of the important places like the eyes, maybe the nose, maybe the, where the mouth begins and ends. Um, and I've done that before. And that is, it does work. It's accurate, but it's so time consuming because you plot out all these points and then you connect them all. And at some point it just occurred to me there's an easier way. So what I've been doing is I will print out two copies of the paper, two copies of the picture on just copy paper. One I will use as a reference. The other one, if you look really closely, I don't know if you can tell, you can see some tiny dots that I've placed in strategic places on these photos, like in the irises of the eye, around the nose, the mouth, um, to measure off the actual height of where the chin is to the top of the forehead. And while I know taking drawing classes, the proper rate, you know, ratio of where things should be in the placement of where the things should be, um, finding these points, these intricate points in the photo is essential. These are actually my plotting points. Well, how do I get my plotting points onto my sketch paper? Well, I've already done that. And I don't know if you can tell, um, there are some tiny, tiny points on here. It's probably not going to show up really well. I will uh, cut to the video in a little bit after I do my sketch, but here's how I do it. I take and I turn the paper over and I take my softest Faber-Castell pencil, which would be like, you know, an 8B or something that where the graphite just really comes off of it easy. And I just you know, slightly color over the whole entire back of the picture. And then I will place it onto the paper and then taking a slightly harder pencil, I, I used my H pencil from, from Faber-Castell, I just press into those areas, those specific areas, I just apply a little bit of pressure and mark off all the things, all the basic points that I want to try to capture in my sketch and then I'll have these tiny little dots just all over. You can kind of see them if you look closely. And the next thing I'll do is I will, by using now my reference photo, I will lightly connect the dots and I will get my basic sketch. And it will be much more accurate than me just trying to eyeball it. So I'm going to cut out here. And the next thing you'll see, I'll try to show you my base sketch after I've connected the dots, so to speak.
Okay, so now I have my base sketch complete. I don't know if you can see all the details. It still might be a little dark. I went through with my kneaded eraser and tried to lighten it up because um, I don't want the graphite to show through when I actually start adding color. One place where it's really dark are those glasses. Um, but I'm not too worried about that because I am going to add black over that. So that should cover up nicely. So there's my basic sketch. Accurate because I used my plotting points. And I'm going to move on from there. All right, so now that I have my basic sketch completed, I'm going to be adding some color. And what I did was I took my photo and I compared all the colors from my chart that I made very recently from all my Prismacolor Premier pencils. And I matched all the different tones for flesh, for eyes, for, um, for David's hair, for my granddaughter's shirt. I took all of those and I know there's a glare from this light, but I match them to my chart so now I know exactly which colors to use and which will be the most accurate. These are the colors here that I'm going to use for my granddaughter. There's several different flesh tones and pinks that's going to capture her face and her lips and the darker tones, the mid-tones, the dark tones, and of course the lighter tones. Um, I've got a couple of different grays for her shirt. I've got a black and a slate gray for her eyes. She has the most beautiful blue eyes. Just happened to match her daddy's. Um, and then David's colors. Some of, I'll use some of Alyssa's same colors for him too, but he's got um, several different darker browns for his hair, the light, the mid, and the dark tones. Slightly darker flesh tones for his shirt. I've got... Uh, crimson red and then a deeper red for the shadows and I can accomplish all the different colors I need just by layering and applying different pressure with my color pencils as I work. So now that that's done I'm ready to just start sketching.
Okay, so I've paused on this drawing, been away from it for about 24 hours, and that's good because now that I've been away from it and I'm coming back and looking at it again with fresh eyes, I can see some places that I need to fix. Um, didn't really notice this as much yesterday, but as I'm coming back with fresh eyes, I can see that the side of her face is a little puffier. I need to pull it in a little bit to match the drawing a little bit more. That's gonna give me this extra space at the top of her ear that I was finding I didn't have for some reason. So it's always good to leave your drawing, step away, whether it's a couple of hours, whether it's a day or two days, because you will come back and you'll look at it with fresh eyes and you won't start going down this rabbit trail, focusing on a certain area and continuing to do it wrong. Because even though I did use my carbon method on the back of the sheet to plot out the points, I didn't trace the whole image. I just plotted out points and then I connected them. And then as I work on certain areas, adding value, color, shape, you can distort it just a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at everything again and just fix a few areas before I carry on with the next part of the drawing.
Okay, I just want to stop my time lapse. Um, I'm so excited. I was just, um, if you were watching my time lapse, you saw that I was adding the different colors to the beer. There's like three different colors, actually four different colors in here now. And I wasn't happy with how they were blending together. So I took this um, colorless blending pencil from Prismacolor Premier. It's a PC 1077 and it's colorless. There's actually no color, but what it does is it, when you rub it over other colors, it blends it. And I love how it blended it because I can really see the different colors of his uh, beard now. I think it still can use some layering and blending, but oh my goodness, I'm loving that. I'm loving how that looks. So I just wanted to stop and point that out, that if you want some different options for blending, try one of these Prismacolor Premier Colorless Blending Pencils. You can order them by themselves. I think I ordered this one because it was more cost effective to get like a set of three or something. Um, PC 1077. Awesome. Loving this thing. Okay, so I think I've decided I want to try um, a different blending method for this, especially for the flesh tones um, and the face. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take my Gamsol um, solvent blender and I'll be putting it on cotton swabs and I'll brush off any of the excess, just so there's a little bit. I'm going to try to try to blend some of these um, flesh tones. And then once I let it dry, I will be able to actually layer more color on top of it. What I'm hoping it'll do is it will smooth things out, give me more of a realistic finish, but then allow me to layer more color on top. I should even be able to do lighter color. Um, I just want to see what that looks like. I just want to experiment here a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so the solvent blending is done, and I'm very pleased with the progress or, and the um, result. It's really hard to tell in this lighting, but it did smooth out several areas, and now I can kind of see where I need to go back in and layer more of the color and the shadow. 
So I'm going to continue layering and then also they're kind of two floating heads. So I'm going to try to work on their shirts and shoulders.
I'm getting really close on this drawing. I need to go back in and tighten up a few areas, um, add a few more shadows, a few more highlights. Um, in general, make my granddaughter a little bit darker. She looks so pale against her dad that I think I need to do something about that. Um, also, I wanted to go over a few tools that I've been using with you on the time lapse. And one of the things I've been using a lot of that you might have seen but not really couldn't really tell is an electric eraser. These things are great to really go in and bring out some highlights. Um, in tiny places, I've got a really tiny eraser in there. They come with all different kinds of eraser sizes. I'm using a tiny one to get some of those highlights. You're gonna see me use those as I finish this up. Um, I've also, whenever I use this, because it is, um, it's not a kneaded eraser, it's an actual eraser where these little flakes will come off as you use it, I brush it with um, this little brush. I brush them away. I try not to use my hand because I don't wanna leave oils behind. Um, I'm noticing that some of my little eraser nubbins are getting caught um, even in some of the color pencils. So some of them don't really want to go away. So I don't know exactly the best way to do that, except I just keep using my brush. Um, and then I think I mentioned to you the Gamsol solvent that I've been using to do some of the blending with a color pencil. And um, it's very important to work especially when you're working in tight areas or areas with detail to keep your pencils sharpened. So I have a pretty cool little electric pencil sharpener. It's about time for me to empty it. I've been using it so much. And of course, a kneaded eraser, which these things are amazing. Um, they don't leave any nubbins behind. You can uh, use these and refold them and mold them, find a clean area. And when I, this is actually what has been helping me get some of those extra little nubbins up because they will pick up with the kneaded eraser. So those are just some of the tools besides, of course, my sketchbook and my pencils I've been using um, that I wanted to go over with you. And I'm going to start another time lapse and hopefully finish this up pretty quickly. When I say quickly, I want you to know <laughs> this is not a quick process. I've been working on this now for over a week um, or just about a week. And I would say if I were to estimate how much time I've got in this drawing so far, um, it's probably 12 to 14 hours. I'm probably gonna put in another hour or two just to finish it up. This is not a quick process, so don't think you're gonna knock a picture out in a, you know even a day because you really do, like I said before, need to step away, take a look at it, correct some things. I've done a lot of correcting off camera that you haven't seen, especially around um, these eyes and glasses. I'm still not quite happy with it, but I'm just gonna have to let it go and I'll nail it down another time. You know, we this is a learning process. You don't become excellent at it right away. It takes time, it takes practice. It's gonna take several drawings for me to master what I'm seeing and be able to transfer it to the paper correctly. Um, I'm just trying to share with you a few of the little things I've learned so that maybe you can learn as well. I encourage you to go on YouTube and just um, search for uh, drawing tutorials and find the ones that really speak to you. Find the ones that they're using the medium that you like, or they, they, you can listen to the person and, and not, they don't grate on your nerves. You know, there's going to be that perfect teacher out there that you will relate to and connect with. So definitely get instruction. Don't think you can do this on your own and don't get discouraged if it just seems like it's taken you forever because it does take time.
All right. Well, I think I'm going to pronounce it done. Um, from black and white. Let's see if I can get the glare to color. Pretty happy with it. And to make it official, let me find my black. There we go. All done.